Love you. Hey, beautiful people, how y'all doing today? Y'all ready to get cooking? Come on in, cause we're getting ready to cook the Sunday dinner. Let's get it. We got some chicken wings. We're gonna be baking these uh, uncovered on uh, 425 degrees, open for maybe 25 to 30 minutes, and then I'm gonna make my gravy sloth with the uh, flour and Jamaican brownie. Um, so first of all, let's get seasoning these chicken legs. They have been washed and dried, and now I'm going to put some olive oil on it and then in this bowl, we have one tablespoon of Spanish smoked paprika. We have a tablespoon of basil. We have a half a tablespoon of poultry seasoning. We also have a half a tablespoon of lorry seasoning salt. We have a tablespoon of black pepper. Oh, I didn't even let y'all see this. We have a tablespoon of both onion and garlic powder. And we have a teaspoon of salt right here. We're going to give that a stir and get all those good seasonings mixed together. Y'all see the red coming up? That's that Spanish smoked paprika. I'm getting low on it. I'm going to need to go to Randall's, uh, Marshall's, wherever I got it from, and get some more. Oh, y'all, look at that. So did y'all get all the seasonings that I said, the measurements? That's in this bowl. So what we're going to do, once we get that olive oil incorporated over all these chicken pieces, we are going to season it well in the skin, inside the skin, and out of the skin. So if y'all ready, let's get it done. Uh, for the side dishes, we will be making some... Uh, uh, cabbage greens and plain rice because the rice will not be seasoned rice today because we're going to have gravy on top of this rice. So without ado, let's get this chicken olive oil over. You know when you use olive oil or any kind of oil, whether you're using vegetable oil or sesame oil or whatever oil, oil and canola oil. It just helps your um, seasonings stick. You know, I was telling one of my neighbors who I took to the store with me yesterday again. Uh, she asked me how to cook shrimp and I was giving her some information how to cook shrimp. And so, yeah, uh, she don't really know how to cook. Now, y'all do know that when you're cooking uh, chicken legs, your, your head of your chicken have to be on the outside of your pan. Okay, so now that we have all this good old olive oil on this, I'm going to now bring all the skin down because I want this chicken seasoned so well. And then we'll pull the skin back up and season it on the outside. But be careful not to tear your skin. You don't want your skin to tear. So y'all remember when I do this, I have a dry hand and I have a wet hand. Once I get this incorporated over this chicken, we'll get it rubbed in really good. I'm so excited about this meal. I was craving some cabbage and I was thinking like, what would I want to eat with cabbage? Well, you know, the soul food back in the, in the South, we had uh, collard greens and cabbage greens and mustard greens and turnip greens and all the green greens and greens with our chicken. We did. So now, let's just get that in there. We're going to pull that skin back up. And then we're going to season the outside and we're going to flip them over.
Oh, that's gonna be some good. Y'all see how I'm doing it? Pulling that skin right back over. Now let's flip. Flip a dip. And we're going to do the same technique, y'all. We're going to pull that skin down on this side as well and get that seasoned. Let's go. Oh, all the skin is pretty much down on that side. Let's get it. Get it as far down under that skin as you can, y'all. Because when you bite into this chicken, you want flavor. Period. It smells good, y'all. You know, I say this a thousand times again, and yes, y'all heard it before. When you season your food, it got to smell like it's cooking. All right, let's go. And you want all of it seasoned, y'all. You, you, you can't never have too much seasoning. I'm gonna tell you that now. Ooh, ooh, baby, look at that color. Let's flip it over. Oh, it smell good. And then, y'all, we also gonna put uh, some some uh, sliced onion and bell pepper over it uh, be at, before we put it in the oven. And don't forget, we're gonna let this cook open, uncovered that is, for 25 minutes, and then we're gonna do some brown gravy mixture with flour and Jamaican brownie and some water. Ooh, can y'all smell it? We gonna use all that, y'all. Mm -mm 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 -mm. My, 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 my. Let me get my hands washed and I'll be back, I'll be back. Let me show you what this looks like. That's some well seasoned chicken. So, what we're gonna do here, uh, I got two sets of fresh vegetables. Over here we have just some sliced, and I didn't slice them thin, y'all. I don't want them thin. And some sliced onion. This is going over the chicken right now. Uh, and then over here we have uh, bell pepper, chopped onion, chopped bell pepper, and fresh, I did five cloves of fresh garlic. All this is going to go in the cabbage greens with some maple smoked bacon. But so let's get the chicken in so we can get that cooking and then we will start on the cabbage greens because I've already washed them. And they're just waiting to be used. That was just enough, wasn't it?
You can break up your onion as well, y'all. You can leave them chunk however you like to eat your onion because these onions will be eaten. Because once that gravy get on here, oh my, my, my. That's all I can say is, oh my, 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 my. But when it's cooking, open, uncovered, that is, just imagine all these onion juices and bell pepper juices is going to get down in the flavors of this chicken as well as all that good seasoning. Now, y'all, without ado, I'm also going to put a little butter spats on top, okay? It don't matter what butter you use. Right now, I got some country crock. Just a little specks, y'all. It don't have to be uniformed. Oh, that's going to be some good chicken. Y'all ready? I wish y'all was here to share with me. Because it is going to be good. Yeah, what that look like? Okay, we good. Let's do a hand wash. Last evening I had some fun. Uh, we're gonna put the rest of this butter in the cabbage greens, y'all. Uh, I had fun last evening with some of my neighbors. We we were out there having so much fun. I tell you, it's just really fun out there when you are in a community of wonderful people. All right, y'all. Here you go. It's going in the oven right now at 425 for 25 minutes uncovered. And then I'll be back when I'm about to bring on the cabbage greens. See ya. All right, y'all, let's get the cabbage greens on. Now, with the cabbage greens, I either use salt bacon or I use regular bacon, which regular bacon is my favorite. And you can use regular bacon, you can use uh, salt bacon, and you can also use ham hocks. I mean, uh, yeah, smoked ham hocks. But if you're going to use smoked ham, ha ha ham hocks in your cabbage greens, you're going to have to let those cook for about an hour and a half until they are getting tender before you put your cabbage greens. Because one thing for sure, you do not want no tough meat in your greens. So without ado, let's get this um, on medium high. We already have the bacon cut up we're going to drop it in the pan as it gets a little hot and with that baking grease now we're going to put the cabbage greens because we're kind of frying out you know like fried cabbage greens but they're going to simmer as well now uh here again i have a half of green chopped bell pepper a small onion chop and five cloves of fresh garlic chops and i have about a half a pack of bacon that I have used the, the kitchen shears to cut in squares, y'all. We're gonna take this last half a tablespoon of butter and we're gonna also incorporate that in once we add in the cabbage greens. So let's get started. Now, when you're frying just regular bacon, you don't want it to get it hard crisp when you're putting it in your cabbage greens. 
you want it right before it gets to be hard crispy because I like to just sweat it out because when I put these cabbage greens in here, you're going to actually taste the flavor of this bacon. Let me tell y'all what kind of bacon I use. It's the only one I do use. It's by Jimmy Dean. I done cut half of the thing off. It's maple smoked. I do remember that. But y'all know, anytime I use fresh bacon, I mean regular bacon, I, I like to put in some cracked black pepper once it starts cooking because we have a store down here called HEB. They sell black pepper bacon and it is good. It's just too expensive for me. And I'm not too ashamed to say that. <laughs> Way too expensive for me. All right, y'all, since we got that in, let me get my hands washed. We'll get this cracked black pepper out. And when I say cracked black pepper, it's the peppercorn, y'all. Yeah. This is what I put on fresh uh, packaged bacon. It's like seasoning in layers. You know, you want that bacon to be bomb, right? Yep, I think that's enough. smell good and y'all you know I don't eat bacon for breakfast and all that now if I'm even when I take myself out for breakfast I never get bacon I get pan sausage I don't even get ham y'all give me some round pan sausages I don't like them link pan sausage I don't think they'd be done I need them to be dark brown or give me a, a nice breakfast with no no meat because that's what I do at home I don't necessarily have meat when I do my grits and eggs and toast. I don't need that meat. All right, y'all, we're going to let that cook. Once it cook, I'll be back. All right, y'all, y'all see how that bacon is browning and it's getting really crisp on the, uh, around the edges. That's how I like my bacon. Now we're going to go ahead and incorporate uh, the fresh vegetables and kind of get them softened in there as well. We're going to let this, the vegetables cook for about three to five minutes. When you see your onions get translucent, that's what we want to see. If y'all can smell this, honey, look how pretty that bacon is. That's how you want your bacon chopped. Let me get a close-up. Can I get a close-up? That's how you want that bacon, baby. That's pretty. I'm going to let them cook down for about three to five minutes. Mm, 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 mm. And we'll be back. Okay, y'all, I am back. I have went ahead and added just that tablespoon of butter I had left over. Y'all, if you see the onions, they are now getting to be translucent. Now let's bring over the cabbage greens. Now this is a small cabbage green. Let me take that back just a little bit. This is a, the small one. I, do, I have some left over that I might put in the freezer. But let's go ahead and get this in the pot. Now y'all know cabbage green makes its own juices. However, if you like yours juicy, do add water. I don't use water. I use chicken broth, but I don't use a lot of chicken broth because here again, once this cabbage cooks down, it does make its own juices. So y'all, I'm going to get all this cabbage in here. I'm going to let it cook down and if I want to add more, I can do it. So what I like to do is get this covered and it's going to cook down in its own juices and we'll be back because I just may add a little more. All right, we back. Y'all see those greens have cooked down quite a bit. I was able to add, I think it was one another two cups of cabbage greens, but this is how they are now looking cooked down. Now, apple cider vinegar. You can add as much vinegar as you like your cabbage greens or any green vinegary. 
I'm going to add maybe a, a tablespoon. That's it. And then I'm going to add in about a half a tablespoon of sugar because you're going to want to get that um, bitterness off of there just a little. So I'm just going to sprinkle in a little sugar. Not much. Yeah, I don't want no sweet greens. You just want just enough to catch that bite that's on there. And now let's go to our seasonings, y'all. We're going to add in a half a tablespoon of Lowry seasonings. We're going to add in a tablespoon of black pepper. Because y'all know I like it heavy handed for this black pepper. We're going to add in both onion and garlic powder. About a half a tablespoon of those two as well. And then we're going to add in uh, a, a teaspoon of salt. We're going to give that a gentle stir. Get that all incorporated together. All them bacon and onion and garlic and bell pepper is going to be incorporated as well. And then we're going to add in our chicken broth. You know, cabbage greens sometimes have a smell when they're cooking, don't they, y'all? Oh, but look at that. Look at that. Let me bring y'all a close-up on here. Look at that. I don't like my cabbage green cooked smushy either, y'all. So this is where I'm going to incorporate maybe a half a cup of chicken broth. And then I'm going to let it cook for about 15 minutes. And that's that because I, I still need a bite of my cabbage greens when I'm eating it. But y'all, look at that. That looks so good. Full of bacon. Let's incorporate the chicken broth, y'all. I, I put just enough that I can just see it come up the side. I don't want to cover my all my cabbage greens. You don't want to make them swim in it. You don't want to do all of that. Is that in the way, y'all? Yes, it was. I just want just enough in there to let that smoke for the rest of the way. I don't want any more. That was it. So, y'all, we are done with that. So, look at that. We're going to let that steam for 15 minutes. And we'll be back. Okay, y'all, let's get ready to make the slots for the baked chicken legs. 25 minutes have gone, so let's get this slot ready. I'm going to use two tablespoons of flour, a heaping tablespoons, that is. I'm, I'm actually going to use two and a half. How about that? We're going to put in a half a teaspoon of however much of pepper you want in here because you want your gravy to taste really good. You want just a sprinkle of salt. You don't want that too salty, y'all. And you want a half a teaspoon of garlic and onion powder as well. And then we're going to include in some browning. After we incorporate this water, we're going to get it just enough where it pours. We don't want it too thick and we definitely don't want it too thin. I'll be back. Y'all, I put just a little water. Make sure you get all them lumps out of there. That's how I like mine. Y'all see that? Now we're going to add in just a touch of browning. You don't. This great Jamaican browning, browning can be really a lot. You do not want to put a lot on here. I'm going to do just a smidget because that, that gravy is going to be so pretty brown. Just a smidget, y'all. Y'all don't want to overpower it. Let's give that a stir. And you're going to see that beautiful brown color like me y'all see it look at that that's what you want to see so we're going to get this chicken out and we're going to pour this in there and then now we're going to cover the chicken and bake for another 
15 to 20 minutes. I'll be back. How pretty that chicken is cooking 25 minutes uncovered. It has a really fantastic color. Let's get this sauce on here. Oh, that's going to be so good. And then we're going to cover it, like I said, and cook it another 20 to 25 minutes. Let's put in just a little bit of this chicken broth and we're going to swirl that around. Bring all that goodness in there, y'all. That's about a half a cup of chicken broth in here. Get this all cleaned up. We're going to let that cover and cook a little bit more. So y'all ready? Oh, that looks so good. Ooh, we gotta cut that off of that because it got stuff on it. That's a little bit more than I need, but we cannot cross contaminate our cooking stuff. So I'm gonna get this covered. I'm gonna fold that down somehow. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back when we are finished. 